Okay. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. Welcome to Wholesome Chats, our weekly Q&A day. My name is Ginger Lee. I am the creator and founder of Wholesome Coaching, a place where you can find holistic solutions to all your most important health and wellness questions. Today, we're going to be discussing the first in a series of eight pillars that I teach my clients and all of my students, the eight pillars of true health. Why? Why are these so important? Why do I continue to tell you guys about these things? Many of you who know me know my story. You know that both of my parents died when they were relatively young from what is considered preventable disease. That's where my own personal health revolution started. I also deal with my own health challenges. I have a genetic condition that is not curable, but is manageable through these eight pillars. And as long as I make sure that I have these habits dialed in, I can prevent the eventual outcome of my condition. Let me share with you some statistics that you might be interested in. One in every third person that you know will eventually develop cancer. Now, there are many different types of cancer. We're talking about the type that is activated by toxicity in the body and an internal imbalance, the preventable type. So you and two other girlfriends go out to dinner this evening. At least one of them, possibly even you, is probably going to develop cancer within their lifetime. Another pretty scary statistic that I just wrote down today, unhealthy eating and lack of movement kills 13 times more people than that of gun violence in the United States. And that's a statistic from a couple of years ago. So, so this is why this is so important to me that I teach you guys this, that I want you to find daily solutions, the ones that you need to stay healthy not just for you, but also for your friends and family. So what is the number one health habit? Anybody want to take a guess? The first pillar. Yes, you guys already know what I'm going to say. It's hydration. Hydration, hydration, drinking clean, pure water. Now that's important because many of my clients when I ask them, how are they getting in their hydration for the day? They say, oh, I drink iced tea, soda, seltzer, milk, juice, coffee, wine, Gatorade. Those are all dehydrators, not hydration, pure, clean water, right? So that's what we're talking about, getting in pure, clean water. In all of my coaching programs, we take one full week to really get this habit dialed in. It is that important and it sets the foundation for everything to come after it because all of the other seven pillars of health, you can hook into this one habit with hydration. You're going to see that. So how do you know if you're dehydrated? Anybody want to take a guess as to some of the symptoms? Fatigue. Yeah, fatigue is one. <laughs> your urine is brown. Yes, that would be a very bad situation. Okay. Yeah. So fatigue, headaches, brain fog, irritability, constant thirst, which can also be disguised as constant hunger, skin issues that range from dry and flaky and itchy all the way to having many blemishes, right? Digestive issues, muscle weakness, inflammation, even added sensitivity to pain. 75%, 75% of Americans are walking around chronically dehydrated. 75% of you guys. So another reason why this is so important to hook this in. Why is it important to get clean, pure water instead of those other things that I mentioned? Pure water is gonna help your organs function better. You'll have more mental clarity, glowing skin, an elevated mood, and it even is a helps in reducing inflammation and sensitivity to pain. Those all sound like good reasons, right? <laughs> all right. So a, a, a very good way to monitor your hydration intake throughout the day is to just pay attention to the color of your urine. It should be anywhere from a pale yellow to clear throughout the day. And if it starts to get into that darker yellow zone, you definitely, definitely need to drink some water. All right, so what's the best water? I get that question all the time. Anybody want to take a guess at that? No. 
Yeah, everybody already knows what I'm going to say. Reverse osmosis, yes. Reverse osmosis is scientifically the best. However, not everyone can afford a reverse osmosis machine, right? So um, many people have a filter that can fit into their refrigerator these days. Um, unfortunately, my refrigerator is old and the filter that I'm able to get for it doesn't actually filter out the local contaminants. So I use a Brita um, in addition to the reverse osmosis, uh, uh, in addition to the reverse osmosis that we have. Um, a Brita filter is very cost effective. This picture doesn't cost very much. And then the filter you replace once every three months or so. Really very easy. And then you and then you can filter your tap water. Um, I would recommend uh, looking up uh, wherever you live, what the specific contaminants are in your local uh, tap water, and then getting a filter that's specific for those things. Um, also, spring water is one of the best. But when I say spring water, I don't mean the bottled spring water that you buy in the grocery store. I mean from a local spring that you have bottled yourself. Um, there's a website called findaspring.com that you can go to to find a local spring. Uh, unfortunately, where I live, we don't have one close. Um, so again, I have to rely on other, other means. Um, however, those are some options for you to get the best water. Why did I say not bottled spring water? Yeah, if you think about how long that water has been sitting in a plastic bottle, it possibly came across the ocean on a boat, across the country on a plane or a truck, and if it got heated at any point, the plastic actually leaches into the water, and plastic, when you internalize it, is an endocrine disruptor. And if you have any issues regulating your hormones, that's something you really want to stay away from, but my recommendation is just stay, avoid plastic at all costs anyway. All right, what type of container is the best? Obviously not plastic, right? I'm never ever going to recommend that you buy a plastic water bottle. So I used to use a lot of glass water bottles because glass is technically the best, but I'm clumsy and I break things. So <laughs> I would always drop my water bottle. I even got the one that had like the rubber thing around it. I would still drop it and break it. So I just started using stainless steel. Um, stainless steel is just fine. And uh, for those of you oilers out there, never, ever, ever put an essential oil in plastic. It will actually make the plastic leach into your water. So just a side note there. So anyway, yeah, you definitely want to use either glass or stainless steel for containing your water. Um, how much do you want to drink? Yes, how much? Yeah, here's the formula. So it's half your body weight in ounces. So just to make things easy, numbers easy, a 150 pound person needs to drink 75 ounces of water every day as a baseline, as a baseline. This is, shouldn't go below that, right? So um, that works out to, this guy is a 24 ounce bottle. So that works out to about three of these guys every day. Personally, y'all, once you start getting this habit going, you will figure out where your sweet spot is. Me, I'm three liters a day. I notice a difference in my body if I don't get three liters. Now, keeping track of how much, if you're just starting to develop this habit, um, when I first started out, I needed to keep track until this habit became autopilot, right? So there's a few different tricks that I learned across the along the way. Uh, those of you who have planners, you can buy those stickers that you put in your book, or uh, there's, there's printable uh, templates that you can use for daily water intake. You can hang it on the wall if you're at work or, you know, just keep it with you throughout the day. But I found some things that are super, super easy. So... Um, since they're on here, I'm going to show you these abacus beads. This is one of my favorite ways. So they're not expensive at all. And as you go throughout the day, you see there's five beads on there. And this guy is probably, you know, four to five of these is probably a, a good amount for a, an adult. And as you drink one bottle, you take the bead and you push it up. And then two, three, right? So by the time you get to the end of the day, you know how many of these you've drank. A very unsophisticated way of keeping track is I used to just use hair ties. If you're a lady, 
you've got these hanging around, right? So you start the day by putting them on your wrist. And then throughout the day, as you drink one, you just hook this around the water bottle and two, right? Until all four of them by the end of the day or five are on the water bottle. That's an easy way to help keep count. And this is actually my old water bottle. Uh, the last way that I wanna tell you about is um, just use a dry erase marker. I used to carry this around in my purse. It's a little more messy, right? Cause you gotta keep it from being wiped off. But if, if you sit at a desk or something where this is stationary, it, it's easy to do. So you have your dry erase marker and throughout the day, you can do it two ways. You can either put all the tick marks on there before you leave the house and then wipe them off throughout the day. Or as you drink them, you can just make a line or an X or star or whatever floats your boat. How about if you don't like water? What do you do then? I have so many people that say, but I don't like drinking just plain water. What do I do? Very, very easy way for you to flavor your water is to make some sassy water. That's what I call it anyway. Um, basically, go to the store, get yourself some citrus fruits, some herbs, some spices, berries. You could even put vegetables in there if you so choose. You just kind of slice them up and put them in there. Today, I have a lemon, mint, and there's a little basil in there as well. And last week, I had blackberry with a little rosemary, which tasted interesting. It's pretty good. Um, but you can, you know, the best part about this is you get to flavor it with whatever you like. Cinnamon sticks is also a really uh, nice flavor in there. And you could put cayenne, you could put like tomatoes or something. I don't know how that would taste. Anyway, you get the idea, right? You can put whatever you want in there. All right. How about electrolyte replenishers? And those of you who are, who know me, know that these are two brands that I highly, highly recommend. I've been using both of them for decades. So Ultima is my favorite. I believe it tastes the best. As a matter of fact, Thrive Market had like a super sale on Ultima a couple of weeks ago. So I just got all the flavors. Uh, blue raspberries, probably my very favorite. I don't know. I have watermelons also delicious. I, I, they're all they're all amazing. They're all amazing. And then uh, Vegas Fort. This was actually uh, um, it's a brand created by Brandon Brazier, who's an, a vegan ultra runner, and he created a whole line of products that are plant based. The most important thing for your electrolyte replenisher is it should have no sugar, zero sugar. That's a big deal, right? And we'll talk about that next week when we get to the next pillar, but zero sugar. Um, and this is a great way to flavor your water and also helps with, uh, with absorption, uh, hydration and absorption. All right, another of my favorite ways to get in flavored hydration is with herbal tea. So you saw me drinking this earlier. This is a dandelion coconut uh, tea that I was drinking. Uh, here we have uh, the Republic of Tea Biodynamic Ginger Tea, which is um, extremely helpful to the digestive system. And then this is a brand I've been exploring lately. I just kind of, you know, feels good, right? Everything's groovy. Aloha Spirit. Um, this one's Lemon Lokalani Rose, which tastes delicious. And this guy I haven't tried yet, but it has passion flower and rose in it. So um, another option for you to get in for hydration. I'll still taste it. But... And then last but not least, my absolute favorite way to get in some flavor in my hydration is with essential oils. And not just any essential oils, right? Because we're using these internally. The only essential oil company that I will ever recommend for myself, my family, and my clients is going to be doTERRA. And there's a reason for that, right? Which I discuss in my essential oil classes. But for purposes of today, whenever you're putting something into your body, you want it to be non-toxic <laughs> and not have strange things in it, right? So if you notice when you go to the grocery store, um, even at Whole Foods, and you see essential oils that are on the shelf, if you turn them around, you'll see it says for external purposes only, right? You can't use them internally, probably because they're not what they say they are. Essential oils are an unregulated field by the FDA. So anyway, so that's all I'll say about that. But how do I use them? So lemon, your liver loves lemon in the morning. Say that 10 times fast. 
Lemon is extremely cleansing and detoxifying. So every morning I drink one of these guys, about a 30, 30 ouncer of water with a few drops of this. And that's going to help flush out all of the waste products that your body has produced uh, overnight while you've slept. That just kind of gets rid of it, gives your organs a nice little flush, right? Uh, tangerine is also a, a mood uplifting oil. Um, it has limonene in it, the most limonene of any of the essential oils. And again, I'm not going to go into the science today, but whenever you hear the word limonene, think happy. So tangerine is the happy oil. Slim and Sassy, I use every single day. Um, it is called the metabolic blend for a reason. Uh, the cinnamon in this helps me regulate my blood sugar. There's also grapefruit, which is extremely uplifting. Lemon, which is cleansing and detoxifying. Peppermint, which is energizing and then ginger, which is extremely helpful to the digestive system. And it just tastes so delicious. Um, on guard, I'm gonna be starting to use this more often now um, as we're going into the winter months. It's called a protective blend for a reason, right? Um, it's an immune boosting oil and it has clove in it. So, and all the, all the good immune system boosting essential oils. Let's probably start using this probably in a few weeks when we start getting into fall and winter and the yucky season. Right? And then something I've been gravitating towards recently is spearmint. Um, it's very cool and refreshing. It's uplifting and it's not quite as, you know, hit you across the face as peppermint. It's just a little softer, a little smoother. All right. So that's essential oils. So the last thing I want to discuss with you guys is when. When should you be drinking your water? Ideally, you want to get your hydration around your meals, not with your meals. Drinking too much water along with your breakfast, lunch, or dinner can disrupt the digestive process. So ideally, you want to drink your water at least a half an hour before you start eating and leave about an hour after you start eating to start drinking your water again. And if you're looking at me like, oh my gosh, that sounds way too complicated, don't stress. Just focus on getting your hydration in first. Focus on developing the habit first. And then as you get this habit locked into your lifestyle, you can start tweaking when you're having your water. So for instance, for me, um, I've been on this habit for so long that you know it's autopilot for me now, but I wake up, I have about, this is about a liter of water um, in the morning before I have anything else. And then, um, you know, after breakfast, usually I'm exercising towards midday. And so that's when I'm going to get another liter of water, right, with while I'm exercising. And then towards the end of the day, um, after dinner, I start uh, drinking usually about half one of these. And then my husband and I, we also have a giant cup of herbal bedtime tea before we go to sleep. So, and then most importantly, I keep a water bottle or a, one of these uh, glasses with me throughout the day. It's always next to me and I'm always sipping. So um, it's about three liters of water that I drink every day and I don't even really think about it anymore. Your takeaway from today should just be to start small. Start small and focus on just this for one week before you focus on any of the other things, right? Just this, don't, don't try to do all the things at once. As always, I have some fun giveaways for you this week for Q&A Day. It's going to be a lemon doTERRA and a blue raspberry Ultima. Yes. So to enter to win these guys, you're going to go to the events page on my website. There you go. There it is. Wholesom.com backslash events. And there will be an entry form there on the top of the events page for you to enter to win. The winner will be announced on Monday morning next week, and you have until Sunday at midnight to put in your entry. Okay, next week, we're going to be discussing the next two pillars of health, which are, as you probably would imagine, nutrition and exercise. As you know, these two work in tandem to help you maintain a healthy weight, keep every organ in the body functioning properly, help regulate hormones, and also helps you prevent this ease. We're going to have a conversation about carbs. We're going to talk about dirty dieting. So stay tuned and we'll see you next week. Until then, camel up.